The captain is very nervous which way to leave this anchorage. Uh, so on the way here, all of this was seven feet. So we better measure it. Whether our five and a half foot keel can make it. 11, 12. I think he has picked the shallowest spot to enter. 11, nine, oh. nine and a half, 10. Yeah, he's definitely picked the shallow spot to enter. 10. I always get very nervous when the water starts glowing this brightly and you can see straight down to the coral beneath it. But it's always a bit deeper than I expect. So far at least. All good? All good. Just remember when we're leaving, point at that mountain. And Simple. what's this one? This one looks super shallow. Well, oh, I swear he's colorblind. <laughs> As always, even in this little boat, I'm grateful for the first matey over there on the bow. We are just scouting out the new anchorage. This looks amazing. There's nobody here, so we're gonna get some much needed peace and quiet. Like if we need that. I need that. All of this is 15 feet, which is wonderful. And we're gonna have this as our garden. Oops, three feet. I haven't seen water this clear in a long time. Incredible. Okay, if you never hear from us again, Come and rescue us to this deserted island somewhere in a sunblast. There's worse places to get stranded, isn't there? Okay, what now? I'm bored. We walked around the island. There's no bar. No restaurants, no other human beings, it's just him. Someone help. Oh, this is good. We can do our calendar shots here. <laughs> it's really sad to see this is one of the few problems of the San Blas, a uh, paradise as it is. Uh, is all this plastic that washes ashore on some of the beaches. Uh, sometimes we see the locals raking it up and rounding it up and clearing the beaches. Sometimes it's just left here. Uh, we read some of the labels on the plastic bottles and it's not actually generated from anywhere near here for the most part. It's just stuff that's ended up in the ocean and washed ashore in the currents. Uh, obviously the locals have no means to dispose of it. There's no way to get rid of this. Uh, so it's a little bit sad to see. So it's either left here on the beaches or it's rounded up and burnt by the locals. Plastic, 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 just everywhere. So sad. Some of the islands, the ones facing the ocean, are affected more than the others. There must be a current heading directly on this island. That's why it's all covered in plastic and, and no one lives on this island, so there's no one here to, uh, to deal with it. And I don't think burning is the answer either, creating microplastics which then end up in the ocean as well. See the leeward side of the island? No problem at all. There's no dirt, no plastic, no trash flying around. It's just the windward side of the islands that usually get that current bringing the plastic from all over the Caribbean. There's no good solution to that problem, sadly. Just sorry to see that it all ends up in this beautiful place. The only thing spoiling it. And the most terrible thing is that it's not even their trash. It comes from hundreds of miles away. Yeah, you just sit down, dear. I got this. You've got to learn how to work the outboard. I know how to work the outboard. Do you know how to tilt it down? Nah. <laughs> It's not my job, is it? There's a little handle under here, so you can use that to grip it. And you need to pull it up a little bit. And then there's a handle here. You need to push up this way. Give it a wiggle. Out. 
towards me. Push it towards me. Ah, oh, this is shit. <laughs> Give it a wiggle. Very pretty. Easy, neutral. Halfway between rabbit and turtle. Turtles, turtles ass. I don't need any teaching, thank you very much. It's all common sense, isn't it? Till the outboard started up, off you go. Bit scary having someone else in charge though. This is one of the more unusual anchorages where it drops off super quickly, as you can see demonstrated by First Matey over here. And these boats, you can get so close to shore uh, because only 20 feet away from the beach, it goes down to 30 feet plus. It's quite amazing. I feel like backing Bohemia into the beach. Super deep. Think we could fit Bohemia in here? Tie it to a palm tree. And there you go difference of three stroke. I prefer over there. Can you stay in that one? One step to the right. <laughs> and the captain will finally get the peace and quiet he's been craving. There you go. Magic. I don't even want to know the procedure we would have to do to anchor like this. I think they've anchored in one foot of water. I think he wants to anchor a few meters away from the beach. As I say, no way, Jose. Bit of a roll reversal here, isn't it? First mate, he likes easy beach access normally. I don't like running aground. <laughs> See now, if that was a palapa bar over there that was open, it would be a different story. Run aground, who cares? Get me to the bar on time. If and but. Just stick to Bohemia's bar, it's easier. What's the dead? Yeah. yeah, and we are out. I think that this anchorage is one of our most favorite anchorages in Sun Blast. It's a real bliss. Uh, protected waters, wonderful coral reefs all around, and the scenery is just out of this world. We are now heading to Isla Banedap. Very exciting day, because we are gonna meet our new crew there. They are flying all the way from Arizona to join us for a week. So uh, it's going to be fun, fun, fun. Every time we are getting the mainsail out, I am holding my breath, crossing fingers and praying to all my gods. First mate's old gods and his new ones. <laughs> Well, it worked this time. Thank you very much. Let the fun begin. Let's start sailing. Watch out for the boom. It's gonna come across. Is he talking to me? Is he about to intentionally jibe and knock me off? He's seen right through my devious plan. He's in exactly the right spot too. It's like we rehearsed it. New crew is coming, you see, so he wants to bump me off. Time to get rid of the dead weight. <laughs> okay, ready to jibe? You are gonna have to duck. Mind my head. It's coming. Woo. Near death experience that was. Much less dramatic than planned that one. Well, we haven't seen this for a while. Hands up, I have to admit, since we arrived in the Caribbean about 12 months ago, I haven't caught a single fish. 
and everybody keeps telling me that fishing is the best in San Blas. So uh, I really have to start fishing again. I blame the captain. He's just like, oh, I don't really fancy fish. Can we have some veggie burgers instead? You know, so it's the, uh, it's the pressure in the galley that I am under. Enough is enough. I said, no, I need some fish. Let's see. Out of practice, you see. I'm not going to catch the dinghy. Well, he's hooked Bohemia, so that's a good start. At least something bit. Yeah, it was the captain that got the blame for the lack of fish that time, but now it's out in the water. I think he's going to have to find some real excuses again. Whose money's on the whales? I actually think that this line is too thick and the fish can see it. Too thick. I, I hadn't... I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> well, someone is too thick on, on this vessel. <laughs> As long as you do a secure knot, yeah. Like what? Like a bowling. He talked about pressure in the galley. Now the real pressure's mounting. He's got to tie a bowling on camera. Let's see how well he does. I know that one. I think the rabbit's feeling very tired this morning. Not going anywhere fast, is he? The rabbit goes out of the hole, around the tree. Which tree? This tree. <laughs> and then back into the hole. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you don't do things for a long time. You get all rusty. That rabbit's been drinking a bit of the first mate's medicine. I think he's gone around the wrong tree. Around the tree, back into the hole. There. Yes. Can you check that? Looks good. Pass the test. <laughs> I'll take back everything I said about that drunken rabbit. Sitting in this chair, aren't I? No miss shit. <laughs> yeah, the line is too thick. If I can see it, the fish can see it. And we're going to slow. Can we have the jib out, please? That chair's gone right to his head, hasn't it? All right, head up 30 degrees and let's get it out. How's that for you? Three and a half knots. <laughs> it's super calm at the moment. We're used to these trade winds howling all over the place. And now we've got flat waters and no wind whenever we want to sail but very, very flat, so that's all right. Three and a half knots. I demand five as a minimum. Well, one hour later, still no fish, and I think I know why. It's the bloody dinghy, isn't it? That dinghy is being towed behind, scaring all the fish away. I thought it was the thick line. There, the line, that was it. <laughs> Thicker than expected. All the fish can see it coming, that's the problem. And can you hear the noise that dinghy is making? No way a fish would come anywhere near us. Basically, all of my efforts are being sabotaged. He just doesn't want to eat fish. He wants to go back to his soy and beans. He is right in this case. Captain Fun Sponge here takes a lot of pleasure from not killing fish. <laughs> I prefer them in the sea. Is that such a bad thing? Oh, sorry, I nearly fell asleep there. <laughs> oh, must be the lack of meat. I make no apologies for my weak, feeble vegetarianism. It must be my low level of B12. <laughs> Bye. Bye. But otherwise, beauty for sale. Very weak wind, only about 11 knots. We're going at our four knot speed. Maybe another hour and a half and we're there. Beautiful, beautiful sailing. I think our guests are gonna really enjoy sailing in the San Blas. Let's hope the wind will last. And I'm so looking forward to that I don't need to do anything while sailing. I'm sure they're gonna be all very keen to pull all the lines and deal with the sails. So I can have a bit of a rest. Maybe even day drink. You never know. We had a bit of a rain last night, so the boat got a bit of a wash as well. So all is ready and clean for our guests. I'm going to totally pretend that I've been scrubbing the boat due to their arrival. But Mother Nature did it for me. Well, it hasn't been my day, I've got to admit. Dinghy is too loud. 
rope is too thick and we are going too slow just to summarize the reasons why well go on then our bite that was too easy something in this cockpit is too loud and too thick <laughs> And maybe that's the problem. <laughs> oh, I couldn't resist. Cut! Cut! There you go, you got your first bite of the day. <laughs> I'd best look busy before I get pushed overboard. Bad luck with the fishing. <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Cut! With 300 unspoiled islands, flat seas, and dependable trade winds, Panama's San Blas Islands are a true paradise and the ideal tropical sailing destination. Now you can join us here for a week on board Bohemia as we show you the best cruising that the Caribbean has to offer. Learn the ropes of sailing, catch a fish for dinner, or take in the sunset while the first mate mixes the drinks. You decide. Check out our website for information, dates and availability. Late 2023 going into 2024. See you in paradise. We can't have our wine costing more than our diesel. Most of the time, the diesel tastes better. Special thanks in this episode go to all of our patrons fueling the captain's new cheap second mate fund. Shopping for everyone. But thank you so much, and here's to you. If you've been enjoying our episodes and want to fuel the first mate's bad behavior in the Caribbean, then follow the link on screen to find out more. See you next time.